Today we're going to talk about medical school histology basics. We'll be talking about the digestive system. We'll start out with the oral cavity, go through the esophagus, the stomach, the small and large intestines, talk about the cells they're in, how they're modified, how they contribute uh, to the function of digestions. If this uh, video is in, useful to you, uh, please share with your friends uh, or your colleagues. Thank you. Medical School Histology Basics, Digestive System. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about the digestive system. Now, our objectives are to understand the general organization of the organs of the digestive system and how they function to obtain metabolites necessary for growth and energy for the body, yet maintain a barrier between the environment and the internal milieu of the body. So we'll be talking about some defense mechanisms that the digestive tract has. We want also to identify and describe functions of cells, uh, cellular structures, and groups of cells in the digestive system. And here we can see the digestive system start out with the oral cavity, esophagus, the stomach. And we are come down through the small intestines, the large intestines, a little bit about the appendix. Next lecture, we will talk about the kidney, the salivary gland, sorry, the liver, the salivary glands, uh, and the pancreas. And so lining this uh, tube uh, is uh, epithelium on the outside, the mesothelium, and epithelium on the inside, uh, which is uh, the absorptive uh, cells in the gut or maybe the stratified squamous epithelial cells that we see in the esophagus or oral cavity. Now the function of the digestive tract is threefold. One is to move uh, food and it does that so you can expect to see some muscle layers that uh, move food along on this uh, tube. It also secretes digestive juices so we expect to see some serous and mucous glands glands along the way as it secrete uh, materials uh, that will uh, aid in digestion to occur. Hydrochloric acid is another secretion that it has. Uh, and then also it absorbs the food stuff, the water electrolytes uh, is absorbed. So we expect to see uh, some amplification of surface areas to facilitate the absorption to occur. So the digestion itself occurs with the digestive juices, and the digestive juices uh, secretion thereof is one of the functions of the GI tract. And you see the gastrointestinal tract is specialized uh, for passage from one place to another uh, is the esophagus, starting out with the oral cavity coming into the stomach. And then the stomach uh, it is, is, can be large, uh, and it can store food, so you don't have to eat all the time. Also, the large intestines store feces, so we don't, don't have to defecate all the time. So you can store things in a GI tract until a more opportune time. Also, digestion occurs in the stomach with the hydrochloric acid as well as the um, other uh, gastric juices, uh, and also in the small intestines. And then absorption of the end products, in the, mainly in the small intestine, but also in the proximal portion of the colon. Now, if you see the, the tube uh, of the GI tract, uh, we can start out with the mucosa. Uh, and you can see the mucosa is this uh, thick portion here, which is composed of the epithelium on the surface, the lamina propria supporting connective tissue, and the muscularis mucosa. All these together to make the mucosa or the mucous membrane, as some might say. Below the mucosa is the submucosa, connective tissue. Sometimes it has glands, but mostly it doesn't. Um, and then below that is the muscularis externa, the big muscle layers, the inner circular, outer longitudinal muscle that facilitates paracelsus. And outside of that is the serosa, connective tissue and mesothelial cells on the outside. If we go the other way, uh, we can see there's uh, nerve cells in here in the submucosa or the Meister's plexus that regulates the muscularis mucosa. 
There's also nerve cells. These are cell bodies. These are ganglion cells here and here. Um, and there, it's our box plexus that regulates the paracelsus and the muscularis externa. The lymphoidal tissue found throughout. Intercircular, outer longitudinal for the muscularis externa. Uh, you can also see these crypts of lubricant uh, that are glands in through there. There are also is um, excretion, secretions from other uh, organs as well. Uh, from the bowel, uh, from the uh, from the pancreas, uh, comes into the small intestines. Actually, this is the small intestines in here, which it has villi. There's no villi in the large intestine. This is small intestine in here, and we can see intestinal villi projecting up through there. But we see the muscularis uh, externa right in through there. The little small line is the muscularis uh, mucosa, submucosa below it, and that epithelium and lamina propria makes the mucosa. And so we can see the mucosa is a muscularis mucosa, uh, lamina propria, uh, and the epithelium. Below that is the submucosa and the muscularis externa with the serosa on the very end. And the serosa is composed of mesothelium as opposed to epithelium. Mesothelium is a type of epithelium that comes from the mesoderm. Now, if we look at those structures in the small intestines, we first of all see villi uh, projecting off the surface. But we see epithelium on the surface of these, as you can see. Epithelium is absorptive cells plus goblet cells in the intestine. Uh, and then you have lamina propria, which is a connective tissue that supports uh, the epithelium. Uh, submucosa is below the muscularis mucosa, right in through here, as we see, or right in through there. Uh, and then the muscularis externa is a big muscle layer on the outside. If we see that in the large intestine, you see there's no villi, as we see here. Uh, and we see lots of goblet cells in a, a large intestine, but we have epithelium on the surface, lamina propria. We have the muscularis mucosa. Uh, we have the submucosa and the muscularis externa. Same type thing you see in the different portions. In fact, you see the similar thing in the stomach. The muscularis externa, the muscularis mucosa, the submucosa, uh, the mucosa, uh, and the stomach, like the small intestines, have no villi. In fact, you only have villi in the small intestines. Now, if you look at the muscularis externa, you can see the inner layer is circular and the outer layer is longitudinal. And you can see that here in the stomach. Uh, also, you can see it uh, in the uh, large intestine there. Now, if we start with the oral cavity and the tongue, uh, there are different types of papillae that project up to there. The filiform papillae are the ones that move food. They have no taste buds. All the others have taste buds. Here you have the foliate, kind of like little square things, and the sarcomvalet. Sarcomvalet is my favorite one. They have these uh, glands of Ebner that wash out your french fries, so now you can taste your your, your hamburger, and here we can see the taste buds uh, in there. If you look at uh, this one, uh, histo 51, you see that the epithelium is non cratinizing stratified squamous epithelium, more than one layer, flattened cells on the surface, and you see these filiform papillae project up through there. There's a skeletal muscle uh, in your tongue because uh, you have control over your tongue, and there's also a serous and mucous glands uh, in the tongue. Here you can see the uh, filiform uh, papillae. Look at this little boy just been licked by a calf, and uh, they have a really rough tongue. And the cats have a rough tongue too. If you've been licked by a cat, you know, you can feel these papillae. Uh, and these projections allow, uh, in the case of the cat, the cleaning of things, uh, or the case of us to be able to move food under our teeth. Here we see a rabbit we can see the filiform papillae. Also, they have these foliate papillae as well. These like these here kind of squares, and they have taste buds. That's what we see here. There's four taste buds right here, a couple more here, three more there. Uh, and you can see some serous uh, uh, glands in through there, uh, as well as, uh, as skeletal muscle. If we come down the esophagus, you got stratified squamous epithelium. You still have the same layers, muscularis externa. Uh, and oftentimes, the muscularis mucosa is intermittent. 
as we see. Uh, and so here we can see the esophagus, stratified squamous epithelium, non cretinized with nuclei all the way to the surface, and then the muscularis externa, as we see the submucosa, the muscularis mucosa, and the uh, lambda propria and the, and the epithelium that we see. Okay, another shot of the esophagus shows the stratified squamous epithelium, lamina propria, muscularis mucosa, uh, and then we see the submucosa, and then we see the muscularis externa. And we can see a higher magnet that is composed of skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. If we look here, stratified squamous epithelium of the esophagus, uh, the, the muscularis mucosa intermittent, as I mentioned, lamina propria above that, this is the mucosa. Below that is a submucosa. And so the submucosa is here in the muscularis externa, which is skeletal muscle, as we can uh, see in this uh, area. Uh, also, at the top part, you don't have a serosa, you have an advent tissue. And this is the uh, perichondrium or the cartilage that's in the trachea uh, in this case. So an upper part, it starts out with the advent tissue where it's attached. Uh, it's not, doesn't have a serosa which allows it to move. You can see some serous and mucous glands uh, up through here. Now, in the upper part of the esophagus, it's mostly skeletal muscle where you can control it. Uh, you can initiate swallowing. You can initiate uh, regurgitation. Uh, uh, but then the middle and the lower region of the esophagus, it changes from skeletal muscle to smooth muscle. So it's more smooth muscle um, all the way down uh, other than the upper part of the esophagus. And so the esophagus stratified squamous epithelium all of a sudden abruptly changes uh, to uh, a simple columnar epithelium when you go from uh, the esophagus to the cardiac uh, region, the cardiac region and through here, then the fundic region. And so this is the cardiac region here. This is the fundic region uh, which has uh, hydrochloric acid secreting cells, parietal cells, and chief cells, as opposed to this just has a mucus type cell. Um, and so uh, here we can uh, see these. Uh, and so this is a junction between the two. Uh, this is a stratified squamous epithelium, all of a sudden become simple columnar epithelium. Uh, and we can see the stratified squamous epithelium become a simple uh, columnar uh, epithelium as you go for the junction from the esophagus uh, to the cardiac region. Uh, just beyond the cardiac region, you are in the fundic stomach, and there we have certain cells there that we want to pay attention to. One, there are surface uh, mucus cells on the surface, and the mucus is trying to prevent uh, the, the ingesta from ingesting the stomach. Uh, there's uh, so there's mucal ridges in through there. Uh, there's uh, a mucous neck cells in the neck region. You, the gastric pit comes down through there, and then it branches. And right in that region is the neck region. Uh, so you have mucous neck cells, and you have the parietal cells, these big ones, and then you have the chief cells. Lambda propria is what sits them on. So here we have the chief cells and the glands uh, inside there. Now the stomach has no goblet cells like the intestine has, uh, it has no brush border because its absorption is not its main role, and it has no villi. So these are gastric pits. They are not intestinal villi. In this dog, we can see the stomach. We can see the intestine, uh, the esophagus coming down. Uh, we can see the liver. Here's a little bit of a diaphragm. Uh, this is the, the backbone, as we can see. So in the fundic stomach, uh, we have these projections in the pachycircularies that project up through there. And then you see these gastric pits. You see the gastric pits in through there. And there is muscle uh, is, uh, is run by a nervous system. And so they're actually ganglion cells. So these are cell bodies that are located in the iron box plexus and muscular uh, externa. And then also uh, in the uh, miser's plexus is located uh, uh, in the uh, in the submucosa where it regulates the muscular mucosa. So you have two sets of uh, nervous system that regulates the muscular mucosa from the submucosa and the muscular external from within the two layers 
of the muscularis externa, the circular and longitudinal. Also, uh, throughout the tract, you will see a lot of immune cells. These are plasma cells that produce antibodies. There's a lot here in the stomach, and you'll find those throughout, and that's part of the uh, the uh, uh, defense mechanism of the digestive uh, tract uh, to uh, counter any any uh, materials that were taken in, pathogens or or, or the things that are coming in through there, uh, you can make antibodies against them before they can do any damage. So we see the fundic stomach, we can see these different cells. You have the surface mucus cells on the various surface. You have the mucus neck cells in a different neck region. Here you see parietal cells, but this is the mucus neck cells uh, in through here, which are located right in this region. Uh, and then there's your chief cells, these tall cells with these big granules, and then you have the parietal cells. The parietal cells with H and E is very red. There's a nucleus and a lot of cytoplasm associated with it. These are parietal cells that we see there that produce hydrochloric acid. The other cell type is the endoendocrine cells. Those are the cells that produce uh, hormones, and they have granules at the base and usually red granules, and that's what we're seeing there at the introendocrine cells. Uh, and uh, But if you look at this with saloon in blue, uh, you can see those cells very nicely, but they're very dark uh, granules uh, of the hormones that are inside there. It could be serotonin, could be different things that are located uh, in there. But you can see that these cells are sprinkled throughout uh, these uh, these glands. And this is this is in the stomach, and we see the parietal cell. You see the mitochondria through there, as opposed to the chief cells, uh, where we see. Uh, these big droplets, but uh, now we see the argentifen cells, which has the granules. There's this nucleus, and these are the granules. And the granules are at the base because they're discharged uh, in the lamina propria. And so here we can see those uh, intraendocrine cells with the granules at the base. We see the chief cells with the big droplets to discharge in the lumen, and we see the parietal cells. These are nice big parietal cells with a big nucleus, lots of cytoplasm. And they have the secretory canaliculus, that is, the lumen is projected down deep uh, within uh, the cells. And so here we can see the parietal cells, the big uh, cells, and this happened to be in the mucous neck region. This is a mucous neck cell. You can see the mucus there of it. You can see the mucus uh, here as well. Parietal cells uh, right next to the mucous neck cells, mitochondria in the parietal cells, uh, and you can see these. Uh, secretory canaliculus uh, that uh, is running uh, through there. Uh, and if you look at uh, the stomach with the uh, fundic stomach with the PAS staining, which car stains for carbohydrates, you can see the surface mucus cells are very uh, PAS positive. Also, the mucus neck cells, as we see right in this neck region, the mucus neck cells are PAS positive. There's also parietal cells, cheese cells and interendocrine cells in there someplace uh, for us to be able to see. Now, if we look at parietal cells, you can see the secretory canaliculus, that is, the projection of the lumen into the cell itself, as you can see as we saw before. And you can see that here. You can see the light areas here in these parietal cells. Mitochondria you can see in there uh, as as well. And so these are, these are the uh, endoendocrine cells, again, uh, that are in the stomach as well as the intestine. Uh, well, they're in the intestine too. We'll see later on. Uh, and this is surface mucus cells. You can see the mucus droplets on the surface uh, with a telutinin blue and the mucus neck cells, which have some mucus right. So this is the gastric pit and they branch. And this is the neck regions that we see. Uh, the surface mucus cells again, we can see those with H and E, with uh, PAS. For, uh, standing for carbohydrate. You can also see the basement membrane uh, of these cells as two. These are the nuclei and the cytoplasm. And you can see the, the little droplets of uh, surface mucus cells, uh, which is the same as what we see at electron microscopic view. Simple columnar epithelium uh, with mucus at the very end. Uh, these are the uh, endoendocrine cells, also called argentifen cells. And these are the chief cells, the uh, chief cells again, which produce uh, pepsinogen for them. And we can see the argentifen cells, which are the same as these, uh, 
uh, as we can see in the chief cells. Um, and so we can see the big granules in the, in the chief cells. Now, as you move uh, out of the fundic stem, stomach toward the pleuric region, just about to get out of the stomach, you see pleuric glands, and they are mucus all the way down. So instead of having hydrochloric acid, chief, and parietal cells down through there, you can have a mucus cell, but you still have the surface mucus cells, as you see. Here we can see the, the uh, simple layers of cells and the nuclei of those cells. So if you come from the pleuric region to the duodenum, you go from gastric pits to all of a sudden you have intestinal villi. So we're coming out uh, from the pleuric region uh, to the small intestine. Uh, now you pick up villi, you pick up goblet cells, you pick up brush border of the absorptive uh, cells uh, as, you, as you get through there. And we can see that junction. This is a pleuric duodenal junction. Uh, this is the stomach down in here, uh, and then uh, this uh, would be the pleuric region, of course, and then these are the villi uh, of the intestine. So right about here is where you have the junction to occur, lamina propria muscularis mucosa, and, and also you would have a big sphincter there. It's probably sphincter that's associated with uh, opening and closing the stomach. So here we have the stomach, the gastric pits, the gastric glands, uh, muscularis mucosa, uh, that's the intestine here, intestinal villi, you got goblet cells, you got brush border, uh, so uh, uniform microvilli uh, in these cells, as you can see. Um, and so right in through there is where you have the junction to occur. This is the stomach, and then this is the, the intestines. Uh, in the duodenum, you have these glands. These are Brunner's glands, uh, and they empty into the, the crypts of lubricant. So they empty in here and finally discharge up, up to there. So in the small intestines, you have intestinal villi projecting them through there. Sometimes the submucosa is enfolded in. Um, and then, but in the large intestines, you do not have uh, intestinal villi. So at the bottom of these glands, right in through there, you have special cells. These are the penit cells. And these cells, so when bacteria is coming in, they have lysosome that could kill the bacteria. Uh, and so uh, here we see in a duodenum, you have the submucosal glands, and we call these Brunner's glands. These are Brunner's glands, and, and what they do is they help reduce, they, they raise the pH uh, of the ingesta. Uh, as it's coming in through there from the stomach is what is what they do. And here we can see intestinal absorptive cells. You have a brush border on the surface. Uh, this is a, uh, the, the crypts of lubricant or the glands that we see. Uh, and also we have goblet cells uh, that, that we see there. So um, in the intestines, you have intestinal uh, villi, you have microvilli, uh, which makes a brush border, and you have goblet cells. And we can see at the bottom of these, we have another cell, the penit cells. And as the bacteria slide down the crypt of lubricant, uh, they all of a sudden encounter these granules uh, of this cell to be discharged into the lumen. And that would be the, uh, the penit cells would be discharging. Also, we have goblet cells and a brush border of the intestinal absorptive cells, simple columnar epithelium. Another cell that's there is the uh, uh, introendocrine cell or argentifin cell, and you can see it's granules uh, at, the, at the base. And so, if you use a PAS staining for uh, the intestine, you can see the brush border is PAS positive. Uh, also, you can see the goblet cells. So these are the goblet cells uh, that have some mucus type that's carbohydrate rich. You can also see the basement membrane of these intestinal absorptive cells uh, right here. So this is the base and then there is the apex. We can see macrophages in here. Macrophage is a nucleus, another nucleus of a macrophage, and you see different sizes of granules and different densities of those granules characteristics of macrophages. Also, there's a lymphatic in here. This is a central lacteal. And so fats come in here, resynthesize uh, in this kind of green area through here, which is a smooth in the plasma reticulum, goes out through the uh, chylomicrons and is discharged 
uh, into uh, the central lacteal uh, to find its way to the thoracic duct and, and back into the blood and, and into the bloodstream. If we look uh, at the lamina appropriate, we hold, we see some macrophages in here, but here we can see there's a macrophage, uh, there's a lymphocyte, this is a plasma cell, smooth muscle cell, and these are intestinal absorptive cells at the very bottom, and you can see a basal lamina going around these cells. So if you look at the apex of these cells, you can see the brush border, which is a uniform microvilli. Uh, you can see the terminal web in through here, which anchors those villi. You can see junctions between adjacent cells. There's one junction there. And you note that the goblet cell has uh, the secretions inside there. These are goblet cells here. But the goblet cell doesn't have a brush border. Their job is not absorption, uh, as are the intestinal absorptive cells. And then here we see the chylomicrons. So the fats are resynthesized here. Go to the lateral borders and the chylomicrons uh, uh, is in the lateral borders between the adjacent cells. It goes down to the lamina propria and gets into the central lacteal. And so here we can see um, the mitochondria, lots of mitochondria in through here, the chylomicrons as they make their way uh, to the uh, lamina propria. If you look at the apex again, we can see the brush border. You can see that the actin filaments come down into the terminal webs. Lots of mitochondria associated with uh, transport that's needed there. You can see the breast border with uh, H&E and also with uh, tolutin in blue. And you can see uh, the terminal bars between adjacent cells, which would be the junctions. The zonia occluding, the zonia adherence, uh, and the desmosomes make up the, the, terminal, the terminal web, the, the terminal bars. So if you, uh, this EM is cut right through, uh, just above the nucleus. So we see mitochondria, there's a nucleus here, and there's a nucleus there. And they have a rich Golgi apparatus. So this is uh, Golgi here, 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 uh, and a lot of vesicles associated pitching off from there. This is one cell and another cell, and you can see the plasma membrane between adjacent cells is, is, um, is uh, folded up so it can open up. <clears throat> if it if it needs to rough in the plasma reticulum, smooth in the plasma reticulum, budding rough ER, uh, and also we can see some budding rough ER here, coated vesicles for transport uh, to occur. If we look at uh, a piece of the gut, and we can see here, this is a muscularis externa, and it's controlled by the Meisner's by the by the Auerbach's plexus, and you can see these are nerve cell bodies. This is a nucleus. Cell body will be out here and out there, nucleus and the nucleolus. Uh, well, also in the submucosa, you see the the Meister's plexus. This is a Meister's plexus. This regulates the muscularis mucosa that we see uh, radiating through there. So the nerves, uh, in this case, control the muscularis externa. This one in the submucosa controls the muscularis mucosa. So smooth muscle contraction is controlled by the nervous system. If we look at that with H&E, uh, we can also see this is a nucleus of a cell body, and then we have a cell body here. These other guys here are satellite cells. This is the Auerbach's plexus located between the circular longitudinal muscle and the muscularis externa. So we're really on the, this layer right in through there. So this is a uh, smooth muscle in either case. Here we see the pennant cells at the bottom. Uh, that we see there. Also in the submucosa is the Meister's plexus, and you can see uh, the ganglion cells again of the Meister's plexus that regulates the muscularis mucosa that we see right there. So the muscularis mucosa, lamina propria epithelium, that makes the mucosa, and we see intestinal villi in the small intestines. So we can see uh, the pennant cells, as we mentioned, also located there are a host of these uh, endoendocrine cells, as you can see, with the granules at the base for discharge uh, in the in the lamina propria. Now, if you look at the large intestine versus the small intestine, small intestine on villi, the large intestine has these glands, uh, and these have glands too, but you cut these off and that's what you see there. So if you remember in the beginning, 
uh, only the small intestines have intestinal villi. The large intestine does not have intestinal uh, villi. As we see, they just have these crypts of lubricant. So here we see the, uh, the large intestine, no villi, but we do have a lot of epithelium. We do have a mu mucosa, very rich mucosa, has lots of goblet cells, muscularis externa, and the muscularis externa uh, in the large intestine uh, is thrown into uh, bundles. And so instead of being all the way around, you see these bundles. Uh, tiki coli is what they, what they are called. So if we look at this as a monkey, uh, we see the colon. Uh, this is the mucosa uh, going from uh, muscularis mucosa, epithelium, and, and the lamina propria. And we see lots of goblet cells that are located there. Now throughout the GI tract from the esophagus, stomach, duodenum, ileum, special ileum, uh, large intestine, even as we see in the next slide um, in the appendix, uh, there are solitary lymphoidal follicles uh, that are in the lamina propria, sometimes even extended to the submucosa throughout the tract to help the immune tract maintain the barrier between the environment for the outside and the internal milieu of the body. This is part of the defense mechanism uh, that's there. Other contributors uh, to this uh, mission um, is the luminal uh, epithelium. The epithelium has barriers to prevent things from going through. Hydrochloric acid in the stomach and a lot of mucus that is produced by the goblet cells uh, for uh, to uh, prevent the bacteria from sticking uh, to the surface uh, of the cells. And here we see the appendix in through there. And we can see the appendix looks like the large intestines, no villi, lots of immune cells located there. So you can see the lymphoidal modules throughout uh, the tract. You go from the uh, large intestine, simple columnar epithelium, to stratified squamous epithelium uh, in, the, uh, in the anal opening. Uh, so lots of goblet cells in the large intestine. Uh, so in summary, the function of the digestive tract is threefold. One, to move food. Uh, one, to uh, produce digestive juices, and they do the digesting. And then absorption are the other components that we see. In the stomach, we have the surface mucus cells. Uh, we have the mucus neck cells. Uh, and then we have transition between the two, and then we have muscle. Uh, is regulated by uh, by the nervous tissue. Also, the system functions uh, to obtain metabolites and maintain the barrier from the environment to protect the internal milieu of the body. A couple of questions that we have, which of the, uh, these cells are found both in the stomach and intestine? The intraentrocrine or gentle cells? Yes. Fibroblasts, of course. Goblet cells? No. So the answer is A and B. Goblet cells are not found in the stomach. The digestive system functions to attain metabolites necessary for growth, however, to maintain a barrier for the environment. Which of these is the least effective barrier? The composition of a saliva we'll learn later on uh, is a barrier because it has antibodies in it, it has enzymes in it, uh, it has things that ties up bacterial growth. Uh, Yes, so that's one of them. Uh, uh, acidic acid of the stomach, that certainly is a barrier. A large volume of mucus, that is a barrier. Um, and nearby abundance of immune cells uh, for structure, that's a barrier. The least one is the chylomicron fat absorption and metabolism. Um, and that comes through, uh, goes from the intestines direct to the bloodstream via the thoracic duct, uh, and it does not allow uh, clearing of fluid in through there. So of these ones, the, the uh, fat-soluble toxins can come in uh, through this uh, mechanism uh, that we see uh, in terms of least one, that would be the least one uh, to help maintain a barrier. Here we see China. This is in the mountains of China, and there's lots of steps to walk up. I had to sit before I finished uh, walking all the way. So that is the end of the medical school histology basic digestive system. I hope you were able to uh, learn some things from this and if so please pass on our website um, VIBS Histology YouTube 
uh, to your colleagues and those that may be uh, interested. Thank you.